Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you so much, Ambrose. Ambrose is our um, Director of Finance at Dermalogica, and he's gonna take you through um, some really key uh, financial plans during the COVID-19 crisis and answer questions. So please feel free to chat in the chat box. You can unmute yourself. You can show yourself via video. I'll be on video. Ambrose will be on video. You just saw Stuart, who is our um, CFO. Um, so please feel free. We love to see faces. I think this is just a great way for us to connect in a different way. Um, but I'm going to hand it over to Ambrose. And then um, I might chime in every once in a while if I see a um, chat just to give Ambrose what the question is. Um, just remember, if we don't uh, get to all of the questions today, not a problem. What we're doing is collating some um, Q and A's to be able to send to all of you. Um, we're also recording each session, so we're gonna put those up on the Education Center um, and uh, look out for some Facebook posts with additional information. And then you can always go to the, uh, the In It Together website that Dermalogica has um, that has all of the uh, great information that our finance team has given, our global education team and so forth. So take it, it's all yours, Mr. Ambrose. All right, Hi. I unmuted you. Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Ambrose Sharash. Uh, great, to you, great to see you all. As uh, Salah said, I am the U.S. Finance Director here in Dermalogica. Um, I hope you are safe, your family is safe, you are well. Um, as Salah said, we have 45, uh, 60 minutes. And um, I want to run through a couple of things, mainly four big, big buckets. One is financial tips. So what is the useful advices you can, you can use to getting through this 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 virus period this lockdown period the second one is federal support federal government support uh, we the team we spend a lot of time to investigate the supports and the background available here um, not just in federal but state level also the third point is which programs available in state level so i i pick new york and new jersey to kind of go deeply and understand what kind of support available in state level. Um, we had a session last week for California. If somebody is here in California, another state, this, this slide is still available. And the last session, hopefully we have time for that, is about to go through some kind of financial definition, financial statement, which is crucial if you apply loans, for example, to have some kind of basic knowledge about this, this important financial definition. One of the main one is the cash flow, of course, the cash flow plan I will, I will talk about later. And there is a really good cash flow session available in, in this together website. So I'm really encourage everybody to, to go there and, 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 and go through it. But hopefully we have like five, 10 minutes when actually I can, I can show, show the cash flow plan also. Um, as Sana said, we kept the group uh, relatively small so really encourage everybody to, to ask questions whether through chat box whether you can just stop stop me and just shout the questions happy happy to answer i cannot promise that i can you know answer all of it but but i can promise that we we give the questions and come back to you um again is is as a finance team we don't have really any opportunity to talk with our tribe your customers I'm really, I'm really exciting and really, it's really an honor to, to be with you guys and, and engage with you and, and, and hopefully, hopefully helping with you, although the, really the circumstances is not, not ideal. So it's funny because I had exactly the same discussion yesterday with my sister. The sister is a skincare therapist also in Hungary, exactly the same situation, lockdown, so we need to just go through this exactly the same discussion with her but of course the the european the hungarian hungarian support is is slightly different um so i just want to share my screen hopefully
Is it visible? Cool. So, as I said, these are the these are the main topics I want to want, want to run through. Before we before we go to the to the to the feather and stage support, just quick financial tips. Um, one more one more comment for this presentation. This presentation is the object is the subject is really really uh, difficult. I found it at least really really difficult. Laws, numbers, a lot of information in these slides, which is in the first time this can be difficult. So we will share these slides later. So I I would recommend you just focusing on the presentation. I will try to highlight the main messages, and then we later will share the share the slides with an information on it. So you don't don't need to spend no time to to make notes. We will share the presentation uh, later. So financial tips. Um, as I said, these are the obvious tips, but I, I still recommend you to you know just keep in mind these tips because this can be this can be obvious, obvious uh, useful for in this in this period. First of all, have a cash flow plan. I think in this period you need a plan, and you need especially in a cash flow plan which is which is focusing in the cash in, inflows and outflows many people talking about profit and losses which is many times is the same but there is i think if i can highlight one significant difference is that you can run your business for a certain period of time without making any profit but you know it can happen many businesses that you can run without any profit whether it's a bigger business, whether it's a smaller business, whether it's a successful business, whether it's not successful, it can happen. But it does not make your business fail. What is make your business fail if you run out of the cash? Which is make your business fail if you, if you cannot pay your, you know, your rent to your landlord and landlord is shutting down your business. That's why you need a plan to understand when is the cash flow looks like. When do you reach the point when you're, net cash balance will be in, in negative. That's why I really, really encourage everybody to sit down and have a cash flow plan. We have a cash flow template in our website. I encourage everybody to go there and see, but what we had just a discussion with my sister is if it's just a piece of paper, just please try to have a plan by day, what kind of inflows and outflows you have in terms of cash. And once you see when is your problem is have, then you know that which is the day you have to intervene. So that's, that's number one. That's, I think it's the most critical. The second one is really implement, I said, an emergency budget to understand how you can reduce your cost. I mean, we are, we are operating in the, in the service business. So the biggest cost is, is definitely the salary and related, related costs. So, I will go through later that actually lots of government support available, how we can, you know, get getting through this period and how we can, you know, support this, this kind of cost reduction, how we can make sure that we can take care of your employees uh, financially and emotionally. So that's why you need to go through the cash flow and understand that you can uh, cut or optimize costs. The third one is, is communication with your vendors, lenders, and suppliers. I think it's really important that you need to communicate your, your vendors proactively. So you cannot just ignore the situation you have. If you have a trouble paying your bills, then you need to be upfront. You need to communicate in advance because ignoring the situation is just, you know, make this tough situation worse. Is many companies available, you know, many companies issue statements that they're willing to work with the, with the customers. So you need to just go through one by one and, and, and make sure that you have this tough discussion, difficult discussion with your vendor. As I said, we are in the service business. One of the biggest cost items is rent next to the salary. We have a landlord letter available in our website. And actually, you can use this to, to negotiate with your landlord. So I really encourage you to, to use this available resource 
and start start negotiation if you see a problem in your in your cash flow. But we are as a dermatological, we issue the or, or statement also, which is available when we extend our terms, when we extend the return policy, when we extend our dermalogica.com promotion program where you can participate. So I really encourage you to use Dermalogica also to, to really get, get some kind of benefit in this difficult time. The fourth one is really understand the government packages. And that's why I'm here to help you. And actually it's four big groups. One is tax credits. The second one is deferred payment to social security taxes. The third one is unemployment. And the fourth one is, is emergency loan option. For you guys, I would say the loan option, if I have to prioritize this, the loan option is number one. And the second one is the unemployment but then you can get some benefits in, in, in terms of tax credit also. In the later of the presentation, I will go through all of the, all of the programs. Uh, get low interest loans. So obviously if you have access for the government emergency loan, that's, that's a really good loan options available. But if you don't have access for that, you can still think about, you know, refinancing your existing loan. It's just a background. The, the federal government cut the interest rate to zero percent so you have an existing loans and you don't have access for the emergency loan option is still loan options available in a relatively low interest rate so i really recommend you to talk to your bank and just consider refinancing hold on your tax payment as you probably know you have not july 15 any taxes due in 2019 so please you know just Keep in mind that you have this extra few months. You know, it's coming back to the cash flow plan. If you look at your cash flow plan, you can see when you have these days when you actually have troubles or weeks in terms of cash balance. And if you can hold your tax payments can be a, a good benefit. Of course, that will be around if you expect the refunds from, from IRS, then I encourage you to, to make sure the tax return is happening as soon as possible. Check out state-wide assistance. When I when I, we went through the programs, I mean, still at state state assistance programs are available, but they are not as rich as federal supports. But still available, I would encourage everybody to 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 have an understanding. I will give a give a give a background about New York and New Jersey now, and um, check your insurance coverage um many many small businesses has some kind of business interruption insurance which hopefully may have coverage from this this type of losses so i really encourage you if you have some kind of insurance whether it's a standalone business interruption insurance or the business interruption interruption insurance is part of your insurance package i really encourage you to to have an understanding whether whether this insurance covers some kind of coverage for your losses. In Dermalogica, we had the same and we have currently a negotiation with them, whether they can cover any, any losses for us. So these are the kind of the tips what, what I really recommend you to, to kind of sit down, have a piece of paper and just throwing ideas there and the, put the plan together and then just go after it. Um, and you can, you can get some smaller wins and gains for your personal expenses also. You know, for example, you want to contact your car insurance carrier to make sure that you can get some refunds. For example, in the office, we cannot commute anymore because we're working remotely. So my car insurance company is actually providing me a refund or you make sure that if you have a monthly membership like a gym membership but you cannot access to the to the service anymore make sure that they're not charging your card so actually if you if you go back your personal expenses you can get some some benefits also so this is just uh, this is just for financial tips as i said i want to go through deeply in the in the government package so first of all the family first bill um the family first bill is, uh, if I would like to translate it in a very simple language, 
every business should provide a paid sick leave and then employees who is unable to unable to work because of the COVID-19. Whether is the employee has some kind of symptoms, whether his employee is ordered to be in quarantine, is some kind of shape or form if 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 they impacted because of the of the COVID-19, every business should provide them two weeks of pay sick leave. Yeah. And this is the 100% of the employee salary. The second option, if, if the employee is unable to work because some of the family members or loved ones, uh, they impacted because of COVID-19, so the, so the employee should take care of them. In this case, the same two weeks, the employee should provide two weeks of paid sick leave, but the two thirds of the, the employee salary. And the third one is up to 10 weeks expanded leave for the employees who cannot work because the school closures. So this is the three things you, you need to just aware of that this is law. So this is not an optional program. If you are employed and an employee is impacted because of COVID-19, you need to provide this kind of support. The government is support you. They provide a one-to-one -one tax credit for all of the pages you paid. Um, what the, this tax credit means, so every pay period, you withhold a certain amount of your employee earnings and you pay to the federal government uh, quarterly. So if you have, let's say, a $10,000 payroll taxes you need every quarter to pay your federal government and you have a 2000 tax credit because you pay sick, uh, you pay this uh, pay sick leave then you actually apply this 2000 to the 10000 uh, dollar payroll and then then you can get this tax uh, tax credit if the tax credit is higher than the the payroll taxes then actually you can get refunds from the IRS and then, and the tax and these these three funds will will process as up. So these are the these are the really important uh, uh, details that you you have to aware. If you have in this situation, you have to pay pay sick leave. You you get employer support from the government. Actually, you can get tax credit also if you maintain your payroll. So you not lay off people. You maintain your payroll. You still get tax free, this roughly the same method, but the size of the tax print is different. In the appendix, I put the details of it. So after after presentation, you can you can actually check what is the what is the tax credit per amount per worker. So actually you have a sense what kind what kind of support is available in, in that bucket. So as I said, if I if I'm talking about government support, one is a tax credit other is a tax loan and then unemployment insurance these are the these are the big three buckets uh, we talk about the tax credit so tax credit if i have to pay basically or you maintain your pay uh, payroll as it is the second big group is uh, sbna loans sbna is a small business administration and the ppp program as you everybody using nowadays this is a paycheck protection program this is actually what came out i think last week there is another loan available this is called economic injury disaster loan so if if you're talking about loans there is two loans available the paycheck protection program came out last week and then economic injury disaster loan i think it was available probably at the beginning of the month um, I will talk about both, but I will focus on more the paycheck protection program. The, the economic injury disaster loans is a longer process. The application is more, let's say more detailed, more complicated, and this is less certain about forgiveness. So that's why I would, I would really focus on the paycheck protection program first. What the paycheck protection program is, if I would like to summarize, this is a cash flow assistance program. It's a really good loan in terms of the terms, but if you use the loan properly, actually you'll be forgiven. 
So then it's working like a trend. That's that's really that's really important. Program highlights. So this is for small businesses, less than 500 employees. Relatively low interest rate, one percent. Two years, so relatively short period of time. No personal guarantees, no collateral, no fees, no payment in the first six months. And actually, what what is most important is can be forgiven. Um, who can up, I in the following slide I will go through uh, certain questions. I highlight the main messages. There's a lot of information there, so let's focus on the main messages, and then you can you can read after that the, the details. So who can apply? Almost everybody can apply. So small businesses, sole proprietorships, self-employed individuals, independent contractors, everybody can apply. The way how you apply is can be different, and then we come back on that point. When you can apply, it's already open for the small business in the 3rd of April, and then independent contractors will be open in 10th of April. So that is will be open probably in this week, Friday probably. I'm checking my... Yes, it's Friday. Where you can apply, so you can apply for an existing SBN lender. So if I would like to translate this is you have to apply your, your private banks. Most of the most of the banks are existing SBN lender, but I recommend you to checking your banks. Uh, the most of Bank of America cheese, all of the big banks is actually SBN lenders. But I, I put the link so actually you can check your bank whether you can apply or not on, on your bank. If your bank is cannot provide this, this opportunity, then you have to find another bank, obviously. What can I use the funds for? I think that's that's is key because the intent that you use this loan, the 75% 75, 75 of the loan you use for payroll. This payroll is, I mean, is really a is a really wide definition. I will come back what the payroll means actually. So 75% payroll, 25% actually other operation expenses, whether it's mortgage, rent, utilities. It's really important that the three of them it should incur before February 15. Means if you have a rent agreement in March, then is out of the program. All of the all of the uh, rent interest and utilities should be incurred in, in 15 February. So this really important 75%, so the majority of the loan should be applying payroll, 25 should be applying other operation expenses. If you use these guidelines, your loan will be forgiven. So it's then is working like the grant. If you don't use, if you use 50% of your payroll and 50% of your other operational expenses, actually some of them will be forgiven but most of the, the rest of it is remain loan so that is really important this is a loan and actually is a really good loan so if if you use it as a loan as not a grant it's still it's still a good deal what i read when i when i make the research is i, I found a really good tip that let's open a sub account when you get this loan Put this amount in this sub account so actually you can control how do you spend this money. And then really you need to keep a track where you, how do you spend this money because you need to prove that you spend the, the loan according to the rules. Otherwise, it will be not forgiven. Ambrose, we have two yep. really great questions. Um, one is from Angela. <clears throat> When they say maintain payroll, does this mean employers should be paying us while the business is closed? Or does that mean resume payment once the business reopens? So does this mean that say skin, my skincare company is closed, I'm not bringing them back in because they can't actually do treatments, but I'm gonna maintain their payroll? Yes, you can maintain the payroll. You can still, of course, you cannot, your business cannot function as it is, but you can still mm -hmm. payroll payroll. So that's, that means that maintain your payroll. 
Perfect. And then one other question, this is actually a really good one because I think this affects many people, is can you use the PPP loan if you are a sole proprietor and you don't take a regular draw? So you're not technically on your payroll. Uh, I will come back on that. It's a really Perfect. good question. Perfect. And then um, is there any way uh, when we are done, I know we're going to post this um, to put the web link for the SBA.gov in um, maybe the live chat box or anything like that. So if anybody wants to click on it, they can. Yes, I, I will do that. Wonderful. Thank you, Ambrose. So, what the pay so first of all, how much fund I can receive and then what the payroll cost means and how the payroll cost means in different business structure. I think that's that's where the lots of question is coming. So let's let's clarify that. So how much funding I can receive? So is the average payroll cost in 2019 multiplied by 2.5? That's that's really the, the math behind that. Uh, there is two additional rules when 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 actually you can change the 2019 period. If you are a seasonal employer, so the monthly average cost is up and down. And for example, you have you have significantly higher employee cost in in summer. Actually, the government is allowing you to to change your period, and you can use a 12-week period beginning of February 15 or March. So actually. The main rule is you have to look at 2019 average payroll cost. And I come back what the payroll cost means in, in certain business structure. And then you, you multiply by 2.5. And then you can change this slightly, whether you use a 12 week period, or if your business doesn't, didn't exist in, in 2019, actually you can use 20, 2020 January and February and look at the average payroll cost. So I actually, I put a, an example here. So this is a really simple example. So you have, let's say you have a sole proprietorship. This is your income, $6,000, $6,000 every month. The total payroll cost is $72,000. The monthly average cost is 6,000. So the potential line is 15,000, which is 2.5 multiplied by 6,000. So the monthly average cost is obviously the total divided by 12, and then you're arriving the 15,000. Really important that there is a 100,000 cap. So even though your total income, let's say you're, if you're a sole proprietorship, your total income is more than 100,000, let's say it's 120,000, you still have a cap 100,000. So if you have reaching the cap, your potential loan is 21,000, let's say, rounding up. So, and, I, and then me coming back, I'm coming back what the, if you are a sole proprietorship, what your payroll or let's say income means. Because this is really important that if you are sole proprietorship, your net earnings means that, that you, are, you are, this is your payroll. What the net earnings means when you're doing your tax return, there is a schedule C, and actually I put that here in an appendix. If you are familiar with this tax return, actually there is a net earnings line in the 31. This is your net earnings, this is your payroll cost. So what, if you are so prepared, you have to look at your tax return, see what is your net return, and this is your net return in your payroll because you don't have a classic payroll, payroll cost. So coming back, we went, through, we went through the example and, and let's, let's go what the payroll cost means. So the payroll cost is actually, whether it's if you have sole proprietorship and you don't have, you don't have classic payroll, you have to use net earnings. If you have an independent contractors, you have to use the 1099s. And if you have a classic payroll, then actually you can use your salaries, wages, commissions, health cares, and all of the related costs. So I know it's, it's kind of a lot of information, but if I would like to summarize, you get loans based on your payroll cost. You get, you look at the average payroll cost, 
by month and they multiply by 2.5. That is your potential loan is available. What the payroll cost means, if you are a sole, sole proprietor, then your payroll cost is your net earnings. If you have an independent contractors, your payroll cost is the 1099. If you are running a normal business like LLC, then your payroll cost actually is in your payroll line. So that's, that's how can I summarize this. I put some examples in the chart, but I can pause now if you have any question. I'm not sure, Salah, do you see any questions on that? I know it's, at the beginning is, is a quite uh, difficult subject. It's good information though. So we do have one person and, and she's kind of in, I think in a, a more tricky situation. So she just, um, this is from Shelly. Uh, I just opened a small spa at the end of February. My grand opening was March 2nd of this year. I'm an LLC sole proprietor and have three very part-time employees. I quit a full-time job the beginning of February. I haven't paid myself and was just in the middle of my first um, pay period for employees. I have no tax returns to show or payroll. Am I disqualified since I do not have these forms? Uh, it's, it's really a special case. Right. I mean, actually, we, the first whether, you know, the, because you don't have any business in 2019, it doesn't mean you, you are you're not qualified for this loan because actually what I said, you can use 19 January and February mm -hmm. as a period to calculate your payroll cost. The question is because you don't have actually a payroll, then, then it's really a tricky question, so yes. I think this is on the edge because your business is open so late. So I think you probably need to discuss with the, with the banker itself. Mm -hmm. But if, if you can prove somehow that you want incurred payroll cost, I think you can still still eligible, but I would recommend to, to check your banker, but I can, I can write down the question and, and check our, our, our expert also. We're working with an expert. Um, so if you can just put these questions in the tag, in the, in the, in the message box, then we can pick up and, and come back to you. Ambrose, it's Stuart here. I think the Thanks other you. question would be if, if, I think it was Shelley, right? Mm -hmm. Was that right, Celeste? If, yeah. if Shelley can't get a PPP loan, potentially she still qualifies for an EIDL, which is obviously on a different basis. Yes. Yep. There's another other option. Perfect. Thank you. I see that's it for now, but feel free anyone if you have any questions. The other question, what is the interest rate? I, I think I mentioned it is 1%. Mm -hmm. uh, paying, do I need to pay the interest now? No, you, you have a deferred for six months, which is good. When is my loan due? Is two years. It's a relatively short, short period. The other loans, what we just you are mentioned, is a 15, 10, 15 years. So it's more, it's more like working like a, a loan. This is, I think, is a, a mixture of grant and loan. And you can pay back earlier, of course, no charge, no fees, which is good. Um, we went through the example, which is again relatively simple. Look at your month monthly cost and just multiply by 2.5 please don't forget you have a 100,000 cap so if even you you have more earnings than 100,000 the cap is 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 really on 100 this is this is an example when you have two employees you can see the total employee employee one employee two you can see the monthly cost one employee, one is 71,000, the average payroll cost. The employee two is 80,000, the average payroll cost. So how this works, you add these two together, including tax, including health insurance. So your total payroll cost in the year is 150,000. Divided by 12, you get the monthly average cost and then multiply by 2.5. So you get the 31,000 as a potential. So that's, that's how things is works. Of course, the bank, your private bank probably provide the same calculation for you, but I think it's useful to just, just to know what kind of potential loan is available. As I said, this is, this is a classic payroll situation. 
And this is, this is when you have no employees, just you are a sole proprietor, then you have, you have this, your net earnings, but actually you can get your tax return. If you are independent contractor, then you have to use the 1099. What is your total 1099 divided by 12, multiply by 2.5 and you have the loan. There is another question I think we get is you have a sole proprietorship and you, you don't have employees, but you have an independent contract where you pay. You cannot reclaim this under this program. The independent contract should, should, should apply for this loan him or herself. So that's really important. So if you're paying a contractor directly, is not, is not uh, your payroll cost. You need to, you need to just be, you need to communicate to your, your contractor that they need to apply for this also. So I think it's your responsibility is make sure that they understand that this, this option is, is for them also. Um, Ambrose, before you move on, can you um, repeat what application you stated that comes out on April 10th again? So is there is two April 3rd and April 10th when we open the program. Mm -hmm. April 3 is already open for small business and small preparations. Mm -hmm. April 10 is, is open for independent contractors. So that's, that's the two opening date uh for this program Perfect. both of them is coming through your private bank so that's when you can you have to kind of contact your banks and then one other question does workers compensation covered under any of these loans yes the ppv is 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 all of the salary and related even and tips, related. In, even the tips is that which is i think it's it's good mm -hmm. state you. tax health care everything Perfect. Just, uh, sorry, Ambrose, just, just one thing. Um, and it, I guess it's what we can't do is advise in every single individual situation. Mm -hmm. But if I were um, a small business owner, this, this would be a program that I would apply for. Because in the end, the money is so cheap. Mm -hmm. You just won't get a loan of this type with that interest rate without having to put down collateral, without having to have a credit check. You, that this quickly, you simply won't get a loan like this. Therefore, I would almost certainly take it. Um, the question then comes as to how best to use it. And I think Ambrose has covered, you know, number one is you need to look at where your cash flow is likely to take you and whether you need it just to keep paying the rent, just to keep paying the mortgage and do some of those things. The alternative is that you can use it to pay yourself or your team up to 100% and get it forgiven. But I, you know, I, I, you can apply and then work out how you want to use it afterwards. I would certainly be encouraging most most small business owners to take to take this loan. Agree, fully agree. Um, really important question: How can I get my loan forgiven? Yeah, I mean, I I talk about that is really in one important rule here the ratio how you spend it 75 should you payroll 25 operational expenses rent mortgage utilities if you keep this these ratios your loan will be forgiven it's two important things you need to do something to be forgiven you need to ask you need to apply you need to prove that you spend in this ratio so don't forget that you have you have to go back to your bank but hopefully your bank is remind you that you need to submit your form and actually you need to prove um the forgiveness can be reduced if you if you know if you don't if you reduce your number of the employees you reduce your your wages actually your 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 forgiveness is reduced also if you have a sole proprietorship with no employees then the story is really straightforward. You need to just pay yourself and then the remaining part, you can pay other expenses. If you have an employees, then you need to, you know, you don't need to, if you reduce your number of employees or the salaries per employees, 
then you, your loan will be not forgiven or will be reduced proportionally. So again, really useful tip, keep your records and make sure that you have some kind of bookkeepings available when you actually you track your expenses, how you spend this loan, because it just makes your life easier when after 60 days you have to prove your bank, then you spend the money accordingly. Um, no guarantees and no, pers no collateral, as I think I, I repeated this a few times, is, which is really good about this loan. So what you are said is true, it's a really good loan option. Even you're not forgiven, it's still a really good loan option. So we really encourage everybody that, that take it. Um, these are, actually there is an application form, there is a link. So there is an, a central application form is available in SBNA. It's a relatively easy, uh, I found it easy, easy form. So you, you need to fill out when you apply and then you have to, you have to prove your payroll tax, as I, payroll cost. As I said, the payroll tax is based on what the size of the funds, the loan, what you get. So you need to prove your payroll cost. And coming back to the, the, what I said, is three main category. One is if you are a sole preparatorship, you need to use your tax return and see the net earnings. If you are independent contracts, you need to use 1099. And if you have a classic payroll, then you obviously you have to use the payroll cost to prove your payroll cost. Once you prove your payroll cost, then actually you can, you can calculate your loan. Ambrose, are we going to go over the EIDL loan? Um, because I know somebody is asking, Linda's asking, um, if we apply for the EIDL, aren't we meant to get a $10,000 advance in three days while they process the loan? Whether we qualify or not, we can keep the $10,000 in advance with 100% forgiveness, and it won't count as income for tax return. So, yeah, so that is, that is the second point. I just want to go quickly about uh, the yes. disaster loan. Um, actually, as I said, a PPP is a loan, but working as, functioning as a grant, at least in the next eight weeks, this is a loan. So the application process is, 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 is more complicated. There's more requirements there. After, for example, uh, $200, it requires some kind of personal collateral. The interest rate is higher. Uh, the, the application process is longer. So actually is, is in a good option as in terms of terms is a good, good, good option, but it's functioning like a loan, not like the grant. Actually, I, yes, there is an emergency grant. So if you, if you apply the emergency grant and you get the emergency grant within three days, um, I, I read about that. I heard about that. Uh, to be honest, I, I even, the, even, a, even a consultant when I'm working with, uh, they, they, they didn't give too much example how these things is work, but this option is available actually, but you have to apply for the loan first. And I think you need to be approved by the loan and then you can grant. Without an approval of the loan, I, know, I don't think so you can get the grant, to be honest. That's my, that's my answer for that. And I think that's true. Um, I personally have gone through that and it states that the advance of 10,000 is upon approval of loan. So yes. I think that's so what we're doing moving forward. And then, then you have to, you have, to uh, have a loan that you have to take care. It's a much wider uh, 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 functionality, so how you can use the loan. Mm -hmm. So it's not just strictly your payroll what the P uh, paycheck protection is so it's actually is working like a business loan uh with the with the higher requirements in the paycheck protection so it's a good loan uh but you need probably that i would focus in the first the paycheck protection and the disaster loan second um and the question is you can apply both yes you can apply both but you cannot use the same purpose and actually if you have the economic disaster loans actually you can refinance into the PPP. And when you look at the forms, actually they, they are asking this whether you have a loan 
because then is you can you can you can use PPP and refinancing this. So and and the PPP has a better terms. So that's that's the, that's the kind of the two difference. Um, this is this is about loans. So paycheck protection and disaster loans. Uh, I would I would go after the paycheck protection program first. We discuss the three main business structure, whether it is independent contracts or sole proprietor and, 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 and the normal business with normal payroll. The different payroll requirements you need to be aware. Please make sure that the forgiveness you need to do something and exactly you need to apply for forgiveness. Make sure you track your expenses because you need to prove that you, you, you spend them you spend the loan according to the law, which is the 75 and the 25% ratio. Uh, it's a lot of information. All of the question is there. Hopefully it's, it's, it's clear, but if, if you have any other question for that, I'm, I'm feel free to contact me and then I'm, I'm try, to, try to help. Um, so we discussed about tax credit. We discussed about loan. The third one is unemployment, um, which is again is an important government support. So there is the state-run unemployment insurance, and now you have the federal-run unemployment insurance. The federal-run, uh, federal government-run unemployment insurance is uh, six hundred dollar per week, up for four months but you can request additional 13 weeks. So actually the period of this unemployment insurance is quite, is quite good. Um, so, and this is on top of the state unemployment insurance. So you can still need to apply your state in, uh, unemployment insurance, which is, is different by state by state, but let's say around the 400 bucks per week, and then you can get the 600 from the federal government. So actually you can target easily of $1,000 per week, which is, which is, I think is a decent payout. Uh, really important that is, is an obvious question and it's a really good question whether it is, if I am a sole preparatorship, should I take the unemployment insurance or the paycheck protection program? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the obvious question. You cannot take both. That's, for sure. What I would do is take the paycheck protection program first. You have forgiveness in the first eight weeks. And in the, through the paycheck protection loan, you can finance your payroll, you can finance your healthcare, you can finance your rent, utility. So you have a much wider expenses, you can finance it. After the eight weeks, you can get the forgiveness if you follow the rules what we just discussed. And then you have a chance to actually go on after unemployment insurance. Hopefully after eight weeks, this, this virus will disappear. So actually you don't need to use unemployment insurance, but that is a good alternative. And if you have employees, you know, you can either you need to make the difficult decision to lay off them, but at least hopefully they can access unemployment, which is, which is, which is a, as I said, is a long and, and, and is a good payout, or you can use your paycheck protection program and then you can pay through this loan and then it will be forgiveness. So there's two options you can play. I would do the loan first. And if you run out the eight weeks, then you can you can use unemployment insurance. I'm not sure is is it clear or is there any questions so less than that? Okay. So uh, New York and New Jersey, uh, this is the unemployment uh, requirements and the size of the unemployment. So New York is is maximum is five hundred dollars, twenty six weeks. Uh, you can see the requirements. I mean, all of the requirements in every state are roughly the same. You must be able to work, number one, and you must be unemployed through your not your fault. 
that's 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 the basic ones and there is financial requirements also available so you have to have some kind of earnings from the previous period as you can every state define what the earnings should be differently for example in new york at least two of the four calendar quarters you have to make some kind of salaries to to, to, to have access to unemployment insurance. In, in New Jersey, they said you have must, must be able to earn $8,500 in your base year, which is your previous year. So it's, it's different requirements with each of the states. I collected here in New York and New Jersey, you can find California there. So we try to collect each state, uh, but these are the kind of the main rules. You have to be able to work and you have some kind of earnings before your previous period. And then you can get between two, three, four, five hundred dollars. So that that's the range. The average when I read is around four hundred dollars plus the six hundred from the federal. So overall that's that's your weekly unemployment package. It's really important. If you apply the PPP, you cannot apply the unemployment insurance. So that's that's uh, that's for unemployment. Um, in terms of the state programs for small businesses, especially for New York and New Jersey, I would prioritize New Jersey, the grant. So actually in New Jersey, if you have a really small business between employee one and 10 full-time equivalent, you can get a 1000 to 5,000 grant available. I think it's great. So I'm really encourage everybody, the folks from New Jersey to go after this. And then in New York and New Jersey, there is two, two loan available. These are good loans, low, low interest rates. Uh, roughly, I think similar like the disaster, economic disaster results we just discussed, but in state level. I would, New Jersey, I think this grant is great. I would really, really go after that. And then, and then just just look at the details of that. I put the links also for that, so you can you can go go after this. Um, cautious of the time, I would pause this now and see if there are any questions. Uh, we I will sh we will share our contact details, so you can actually after that you can whether we can email us or. You can have a quick call. I'm happy to, I'm here, I'm happy to help if you're in exact examples. For the questions we have, especially for the opening new salons, we had these questions, we will come back on that. So the only question I see is from Linda. I know um, she was on a previous uh, workshop. The info we provided was only for LA, not Northern California. They're still needing info resources for Sonoma County and San Mateo County. Um, I don't know if we did any specifics, but I think when we spoke, Stuart, um, we spoke about California. I think we did it as a whole uh, state, I believe, rather than specific locations. Um, it, was the, it was the employment development department stuff that we shared, which I believe covers all of California. If Linda wants to drop us an email, also happy to pick up with her individually. Wonderful. Um, and then Angela's asking, does that emergency assistant grant apply in New Jersey if you're a sole proprietor? So you have no employees, you're just you. I mean, I don't know. I can, I can research that one. And do we have a do we have the question for the new salon in a detailed question? Uh, I emailed you that question so okay. that you have it in your email. It's a little bit lengthy, so I wanted to make sure you had that. Um, and just so everybody knows, we will be sending out all of this information um, either today or by the end of the week to make sure everybody has all of the great information Ambrose has given, um, what Stuart gave last week, and then what Lily, um, our, one of our finance managers, will be giving on Thursday. Um, so you might receive a couple of different emails from me, but it's just to make sure you have everything that we offer 
um, and have gone over. And then hopefully by the end of the week, all of these uh, recordings will be up on the Education Center um, to be able to be viewed and repeated and just make sure that you get all the um, information that you need. Um, but that's the only questions that I'm seeing so far. Anything else you want to cover, Ambrose? Um, there is, there is just, you know, financial statements. What is mm -hmm. the three financial statements? But I think it's useful to know, especially if you are in the, if you're starting to apply loans or you're in the middle of the loan application process. There is the income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet. Cash flow, I talked about the beginning. We had a session on that. I repeat it so many times, it is crucial to have. Uh, and then you actually, you can have a plan and ideas and loans so you can put the puzzle together. Uh, income statement is about profit and loss. Uh, p &L statement in, in a period of the time. If I would like to just summarize it, the balance sheet, what we go to questions about is about, if I would like to, I don't know, summarize it in a very simple way, is a snapshot of a, about your, your business networks, is meaning asset and liabilities. And I can put the details in the, in the appendix and examples when actually you can, you can, you can go through it. Um, so income statement, which is a revenues and expenses over a given time period. Cash flow is about, again, is looking at time period, but just looking cash flow and outflows. And balance sheet, which is a snapshot about your about your existing assets and liabilities uh when actually you can i can i can go there if you, you can this one and you can actually what is your assets you have and what is your liabilities and what is your owner contribution this is the three part which is adding your balance sheet asset is like cash product uh Equipment. So these are the basic stuff which is available in your business. You have liabilities. What is your future? You know, future liabilities like payable money owed by a business as a supplier, or salaries and wages payable. This kind of liability is available. The, the, if you add this together, the balance should be zero. This is the equation of the balance sheet. It's really important. But this is kind of the balance sheet. If I would like to quickly summarize, that's, that's how the balance sheet is, looks like. Actually, you can make this, make this simple balance sheet in, into your business relatively quickly. You can look at your assets, liabilities, and your contribution of the business, so your owner contribution. That's, that's how, the, how the balance sheet uh, uh, looks like. I would add this one in the appendix also, which is compared to economic injury disaster loans and the PPP protection loan. You can see, you can see side by side, what is the difference between the two loans. I would recommend to go through also with that one. So you have a better understanding what is the difference between the two. Um, but that, that's really, that's really all, Celeste. No, that's perfect. Um, I think Angela has one last question. Do you recommend applying for these with a bank or your accountant? Sorry again. Uh, do you recommend applying for these loans with a bank or an accountant? A bank. Perfect. Yep. Wonderful. I think that is it. Um, if anybody else has any questions, um, oh, Linda has one last one, and that's what we'll close with. Um, we're subletting space, so we don't have any negotiating options, and we were given zero options. Is it true they can um, evict us? So I think with that one, Linda, what we'll do is um, I will send that straight to Ambrose and make sure he gets back to you if he has the knowledge on, um, on that particular question. Definitely. I cannot Perfect. answer now, yeah. Wonderful. 
Um, anything else, anybody? I think uh, Ambrose has pretty much covered everything. Be on the lookout for emails from me. Um, it'll come from cporter at dermalogica.com and I'll share with you Ambrose's email um, and we'll make sure that your questions are answered. Just on the point, just on the point about can they evict us? Yes. I mean, there's there's the legal side of it, and then there's the sort of let's call it the the human side of it. Sure. And I think there's going to be lots of businesses under pressure, and I think maybe the balance of power has moved from the landlord to the tenant, given how many businesses are struggling. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think starting a line of communication which says, "Look, my business is closed. I don't have any revenue." at least starting that discussion before you get as far as sort of like legal recourse, I would advise to do. Perfect. I think that should help you, Linda. But if not, please feel free to email us. Um, I think that's about it. Shannon, uh, answer to you is that you can go with a bank over an accountant to apply for the loan. So you're gonna wanna go with a bank that is supplying the loans. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you everybody so very, very much. Be on the lookout for additional information from the team. And we thank you for everything that you do for us as Dermalogica. And we hope that we are here for you um, today and in the future. Um, and anything else I see in the live chat, I'll make sure that Ambrose answers on a separate email. All right. Thank you everybody so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so Have much. A great guys. one. You too.